I'm Samuel Case and this is FISM News live at CPAC where we're going to be giving you updates every day. Plan plenty of interviews at America's largest conservative event. Give them your name. Christian Hartsock, Project Veritas. I'm the senior reporter at Project Veritas. Okay, fantastic. And um, how, how is Project Veritas um, feeling this CPAC? Like, what do you guys hope to achieve this CPAC? Well, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people here who I have found, you know, want things, want certain institutions and uh, realities of corruption, industrial corruption investigated, and a lot of people have leads here, and people are saying. You know, oh, can you in investigate this and this and this? You know, telling us our stories, um, and also, there, you know, we're what we're looking for is we're looking for young, brave, uh, of any of of any any age, mm -hmm. uh, whistleblowers and insiders, people who are on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our recent investigations have been into uh, Facebook. And the Google Twitter one was and the inside one I saw where yeah you, you had someone actually working for Twitter correct that's right that's right so we have we have insiders you know in certain industries mm -hmm. that are slipping us notes and you know um, they do not work for us mm -hmm. but they work but they are people who want the truth to come out you're, you're doing real muck raking like they used to back in the day that's exactly right that's exactly right that's uh it's a lost art <laughs> in journalism it, it is i mean it kind of took a nap for a hundred years yeah. i mean there's a, there's still a few there's still a few of us out there mm -hmm. um but i mean it's real journalism i mean uh, uh, journalism is reporting what is going on mm -hmm. and uh you know at the end of the day there, we've seen a lot of corruption i i think that uh, the mainstream media has been complicit in uh, in shielding Americans' eyes from from what goes on, the health, the very health of our democracy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, Americans are suckers for the truth, and there's an insatiable appetite for it. And so there will always be a perennial demand. Look at this guy. <laughs> uh, there will always be a, 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 and we have our hecklers. <laughs> That's a friend of mine. So uh, there will always be an appetite for, for this stuff. And as long as there is an appetite, there's always going to be patriotic Americans, young and old, uh, and of every, of every age, and of every walk of life and every demographic who want the, the true American, as my mentor Andrew Breitbart said, the true American narrative told. And the realities that are affecting people's, you know, we want an informed electorate. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, an informed electorate. We don't have an agenda. We don't have. We're not. We're not partisan. We're not ideological. We simply believe in an informed electorate. So, um, d does that answer your question? If, if I, I could mean, ask I think, one, yeah, one you can ask as many as you actually. like. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. We talked about muckraking and how journalism used to be um, the, the little guy going after the big institutions of power. They didn't care if Republican, Democrat, big business, whatever. Uh, and, and that's changed over the years. You don't really see that as journalism anymore. Uh, more often it seems like they're carrying water for these institutions. W where do you think that changed and do you think there's a hope of uh, changing it back to the way it used to be? So. Yes and yes. Um, what, what I was saying is, is I believe, I, th I encourage every American to watch not just our videos, but, but the movie Network. From it's a 1976 film. A lot of you have seen it. Uh, Sidney Lumet, David, David, um, Peter Finch, and uh, that movie was very prophetic in its diagnosis of the seizure of the means of information by corporate interests. And it also anticipated, so a video that, that I did that, that we released last year uh, with, with David Wright, who was a senior correspondent from ABC, where he was telling me, and I was undercover, but he was telling me about how ABC is not, does not report the news anymore. It's all about get Trump. How do we get Trump? And, and, and the, corp, the corporate, the, the Disney, you know, um, uh, par par parental influence on, on ABC and how the cor how corporate how the corporate uh, ecosystem completely uh, transformed the, the whole landscape of, of telling. So that's a, that's a big part of it. Another part of it is the incestuous relationship uh, that, that media corporations have 
with with their beneficiaries and benefactors in uh, you know they trade on access so in, in Washington there's a lot of they trade access for um, for special you know in flattering coverage right um, and there's there's sort of a junior high school mentality collective mentality in Washington everyone wants to to be a part of the club, sit at the cool kids' table. The cocktail parties. The cocktail that's right. parties, exactly. The smoke filled rooms and exactly. <laughs> sit in the back. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing, well, first of all, there's a, the, one thing that I've noticed in the last five years is there is a major push towards dividing Americans, pitting Americans against each other. Um, there has been, uh, you know, getting Americans to actually hate each other. There's an actual hate movement uh, where, I'm sorry, CNN, every single thing, every they cannot say the name Trump in a neutral sentence, in a dispassionate sentence. That's a problem. That's psychotic. Um, and and it's, nor, it's normalizing a level of, of sociopathy where you have Americans um, actually trying to one-up each other in their, in their hatred of the President Trump and of, of, of and I'm just using this as an example. Right, right. There's a great market for hate. That's for right. For hating people. How can I hate? What is? What can I be outraged about this week? The outrage what, machine. That's right. Outrage machine. Yeah. yeah. And um, and and, it, and it's terrible because a journalist is supposed to be. And David Wright was 100% right about what he was saying. It's a shame that ABC actually punished him for telling me the truth. You know, for actually reporting the actual news, he had to do it. He had to do it, not knowing who he was talking to. <laughs> First of all, he had to do it. You know, um, uh, you know, off the record, as, as may, he may have assumed. But it, it's unfortunate that you have a you have a correspondent, a, a respectable, talented, true news correspondent, David Wright, who can only tell, who is only allowed to tell the truth. When he's at a bar in New Hampshire, he's just talking, a normal guy, you know, having friendly conversation, and he hates that, and he and I could see the, that he did not like that, um, and then of course ABC, you know, they 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 they, pun, they penalized him for it, they they changed it, reassigned him, and it's it's terrible, um, but I so so I think that when you have when you have a culture that feeds on mm -hmm. on hatred, pathological hatred. Um, and you also have this peer pressure mentality. You have uh, everyone uh, I, I, from California, and there's there's a, 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 a great level of peer pressure to to conform, mm -hmm. to uh, to think the same thing as other people. Oh well, I don't want my friends to disown me, so I'm going to think this, you know. And what and, and and what's amazing about our project Veritas, we we have the we have videos of corrupt crooked people telling us telling us what they're doing we have footage of the deeds actually being done mm -hmm. and oftentimes and a, and, and, and a lot of people's eyes are opening people see that and they're like whoa, whoa that's not what I was wait why didn't the media even John Stewart 11 years ago with acorns you know looked into camera B and said where were you <laughs> you know why why are you not covering this um, and that was a time when you know John Stewart someone like John Stewart could get away with saying something like that so at, at the end of the day we're, we're just about getting the information that is not that is being rationed out of Americans uh, informational diets out of the out of the world's informational diets um, so that we can so they can be better informed when they walk into the the voting booth. We don't, we have no preference for who they vote for, but just well informed. We just want you to have have, have the information you need. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? Who, what do these people actually think? What do these politicians? What do they say behind your back? What do they say behind their constituents' backks? Mm -hmm. what, how do they really feel about uh, about their constituents? How dumb do they think they mm -hmm. are? Um, and, and I said there's hope for change, and you said yes. And where do you think oh, that, I said that yes? might be? No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, classic yeah, conservative, yes, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> no, it's all over. <laughs> That's right. No, yes, absolutely, and I, I can tell you why is because we have so many people. We have people coming up, look, people coming up to our booth who are inspired mm -hmm. by inspired by. I'd like to believe that we are the change. 
you know, in, in a way. Mm -hmm. Not 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 me personally, not just Project Veritas, but all but everyone who is who everyone who is a part of what we do and who is inspired you know, the the thousands upon thousands of, of emails we get and tips that we get. Um, there's Journalism is about satiating curiosity, mm -hmm. and what I see in the mainstream media is a is an anti curiosity uh, uh, apparatus. People, you actually get mocked for being curious mm -hmm. about a subject. Oh, you're one of the you're one of those people. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you saying? No, I'm not saying. I'm just asking. I'm just wondering out loud. Okay, mm -hmm. but but you're not allowed to wonder about certain things. Well. I, th I think a lot of people might want to know what the what the what the corporate media actually thinks of of what they're doing to news. I think people might want to know what their state representatives or their or their uh, or the the candidates who are auditioning to represent them actually think of the issues. I think that that's. Uh, that might okay be a little thing. important, yeah, I mean, in a, a democracy, you, you in a know, republic, yeah, 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 that they know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, so I think that there is, I mean, I'm seeing it right Yeah, it, uh, it's all day the boot's been full. This is like the first time I've come Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when there was at least a, an opening. I mean, really, a journalist's job is to be a medic reflection of the curiosities of the public. So it's not, we're, we're only as strong as the appetite Mm -hmm. as the cure the the appetite for information of the american electorate is and that appetite is uh, it's a people are ravenous they're ravenous for the truth mm -hmm. and uh so as long as there's that appetite with which i think corporate media wants to discourage because they're like no, no, no like what uh, uh, mika even said herself we're the one it's our job to tell you what to think That's right mm -hmm. so we're about encur encouraging curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, um, demand to know what's going on. Uh, so I believe there is hope. There absolutely is hope. I wouldn't be here if there wasn't hope. Right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that you. encourages me. So thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, you're running for uh, for office for Congress? Yes, sir. Yeah. District 16 in Illinois against Adam Kissinger. Okay. And who exactly is that? Well, Adam Kissinger, unfortunately, was the first Republican congressman to vote to impeach President Donald Trump. Okay, so you're trying to, to return the Republican Party to um, a little bit more of Trump's vision. You're, is that your hope? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I call him the uh, radical rhino. <laughs> and uh, because of so many actions he's, he's, he's done, I mean, you know, we can all disagree. Sure. But to divide the, the party in public doesn't do anything for us as, as Americans, as patriots. And, um, you know, we, the Democrats, they got really organized and, and we didn't need any division in our party. And unfortunately, he, you know, he chose his path and I'm going to primary him, you know, okay. come next uh, 2022. And yeah. is, is that what you're hoping at, at CPAC is to get your name known a little bit more and uh, uh, push that forward? Well, if you're following me on Twitter, I think my name is known. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there yeah, you go. So, so I have uh, many nicknames for everyone, but... Yeah, uh, you know, coming to CPAC, I'm taking a look around. You know, we got some VIP invites. It's, you know, very nice, and everyone's been super cool. I mean, it's a nice experience. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I mean, one, one final question. Yes, you sir. are you are running, so what what do you think the message should be for Republicans right now uh, it is in going in the future of 2022? What should we bring to the table uh, besides just we hate Joe Biden? What's the message that Republicans are going to bring? <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you. We need to move past that and get organized as well. Mm -hmm. I think people, we need to, I don't know, we need to take that energy that we have right now uh, coming out of the election. It didn't go the way we wanted. I mean, we could say many different things of why, right? No matter what, we have to get organized. And that means we need to get into the schools. We need to get into counties. We need to get into, you know, judges and sheriffs. We need to really turn everything on a local level. Okay. I mean, yes, I'm running for U.S. Congress. However, I'm very passionate about getting the right representation in our school districts because of what's happening. And, you know, Turn Point USA, I think, is great because they're starting to work with younger people. And I know it's a very, I guess you would say, um, dangerous at times, right? It's a hostile environment, but it needs to happen. And I think we even need to get down to elementary. So I yeah, all in the education system. It is in a, yeah, and you know there's there was a bill that was uh, passed last week that's pretty much.
given a green light to liberals to teach liberal ideology in the, in the public schools. And the Democrats keep stacking the cards in their favor. And as Republicans, we need to get organized. We need Related to- Related to 1619, is that, is that what it was? Yes, sir. Yep. So we need to start getting organized and we need to, we, we need to do more than rallies. We need to do more than, than uh, a parade. And I mean, they're great, they're beautiful to watch, but we need people getting down and, and getting new voters knocking on doors we need volunteers and it, it this has become a godless you know and lawless country mm -hmm. i mean let's be honest we're talking you know the the guy we got in the office right now he's saying you know want to take guns after 2022 the summer of 2022 that's absurd it, it just absolutely is so god <laughs> it's absolutely absurd it woke a lot of people up i have friends that have wives that are very liberal Mm -hmm. And they said, go get a gun because right. they were scared. Right. That's happening a lot. <clears throat> and the last thing I want to see is our country divided any more than it is. Okay. And the Democrats are continually pushing the buttons, dividing, manipulating people's minds. And I think patriots and Americans, I mean, we're at it. I, I'm sure there's some really great patriots, even in a Democrat party. Of course. And if elected, come talk to me. I mean, let's save the country from socialism. Let's save it because it's a segue to communism. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, people, they're not seeing the, the writing on the wall. But yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck. And Thank where's you. the best place for people to find you? Twitter. 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 Okay. I'm tearing it up on What's Twitter. What's your handle? Jack Lombardi. Okay, simple Gab, enough. You can find me on Gab. You can find me on uh, Facebook. You can find me on Parlor. All the all the fun spots. Come hang out. Back. That's right. Yeah. All Jack, right. Jack Lombardi. All right. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you for everything Thank you. you're doing. Thank you. Okay, so you're with uh, Turning Point? Yes, sir. And what's your name? Matt Stone. Okay, Matt, uh, so what does what Turning Point really hope to achieve here at CPAC this year? Basically, our goal for Turning Point USA is to encourage activism among conservative students, young mm -hmm. professionals, high school students, college students, because we feel that uh, college campuses and the world that young people are living in is the most vibrant battleground for our cultural values, as you guys know. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very tough because we're fighting the indoctrination of professors and the media, and we're being bombarded all the time with leftist ideas. So people like Turning Point USA are trying to inspire activism among conservatives to not have your voice be canceled and try to spread the great word of conservatism across the world. That's great. And how is um, how has COVID affected Turning Point? Because there's not been as much like on campus uh, learning going on. So ha ha has uh, numbers been going down and they've been going up? Have people been um, realizing, hey, I can't go to school and they gravitate to more conservative values because of that, the, the gravity of the freedom that Turning Point offers. Exactly. That is something that I've noticed a lot, that the um, that conservatives have really become the, the fun people. That's right. We've become the fun ones. <laughs> like in the day, you look at uh, the uh, hippie revolution in the late 60s the liberals were the fun ones but now conservatives were the hey let's go out and go on a boat parade let's go do this let's go back to school back to work have some fun so i think that uh, we're really bringing more people into the conservative movement because we are now the group of fun we're the punk rock generation that's now. right that's, a, that's we're right we're the counterculture that's right we that's are the right. counterculture we're the resistance I, I love it yeah. i love it thank you so much for giving thank us that, that quick moment appreciate I, it I appreciate it